Hi everyone, this is Pauline Love from Art Fair Mag, and today I've invited New York based serial entrepreneur Chris Vroom to talk about Web3, blockchain, and the art market. Hi, Chris. Pauline, thank you for having me. Thank you. So, Chris, you have funded multiple companies in the art industry, such as Artadia, Art Space, Art Plus Culture Projects, and the newest one, Valence. So, maybe you can begin by telling us what is Valence. Sure. Valence came out of this idea that if you can network people together, give them um, more efficient means to um, connect with one another in a trusted way, um, enhance the visibility of whether it be you know an artist practice or or institutional programming, gallery programming, and the like, and create tools for artists to participate in the markets they help create, ultimately, you know, this foundation of culture will be stronger. Okay. And I believe you use a uh, blockchain to provide these services. So could you briefly explain what blockchain is? Sure. That, that, and, and that's right. So, you know, blockchain is a distributed ledger technology that enables entries on the ledger to be both decentralized and verifiable. Um, and verifiable doesn't mean authentic and it doesn't mean truth. It just means not changed. So in other words, a um, entry on the on a distributed ledger, you know, the changes to that entry can be, you know, more, more easily uh, 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 detected. You know, falsehood on the blockchain is still falsehood. So that that dynamic is not very well understood. People think, well, it's on the blockchain. I got to just check the blockchain, you know, which is frankly pretty absurd because, again, if you put untruth on the blockchain, it's still false. So how do you think blockchain can bring more transparency and, and security in the art market? So <clears throat> I do think that it, it can play a very important role um, because Uh, there are mechanisms that can strengthen the, um, you know, one transparency, the auditability um, that is inherent in a distributed ledger technology and enable, um, you know, verification to happen in a, in a manner that is going to enable a broader range of, of folks to participate in market activity. And so, You know, we are one of the founding members at Valence of Art Ledger, which is the leading nonprofit setting standards to enable this to happen, to create authentication architecture that will enable that truth to be determined in a more uh, verified way. And how do you see the art market with uh, ever evolving uh, Web3 technology in the, I don't know, 10 years time? Sure. I, I see it evolving in a, in a couple of very exciting ways. One is in the realm of creative production. You know, right, we've seen the explosion of NFTs, $40 billion of which, you know, traded, uh, you know, in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. That's caused a lot of uh, consternation in the traditional art world, you know, where I'm situated most of the time. Um, And, but I think it's going to evolve. I think it is evolving um, with artists that are in that sphere and, you know, you know, participate in the art fairs that you cover in your, your program. Um, they're viewing um, NFTs and digital strategies as just another means of visual expression that have some unique characteristics that I think are fascinating because it will situate Or, or I think alter the way that the collector, the artist and the world are relate to one another. It creates almost a, the potential for a durational artwork without end. So it reminds me sort of like of the happenings in the sixties and seventies. Um, but you know, not ephemeral, you know, but this continual relationship between the artist, the collector and the world as, as artworks are, you know, can evolve over time based upon external situation is i think that's really interesting so that's one thing secondly i think that over time you know from our point of view blockchain nfts etc 
it's not going to, you know, disrupt or transform the art world in a, in a, you know, profound way and shake everything up and create this huge democratization. And uh, cause I just think that that's not the way the world is going to work, but not I do think, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think that there is a, a very interesting, you know, couple of baby steps, you know, that, you know, so at Valence, we produce a, you know, very robust digital certificate of authenticity that enables galleries to um, replace what is a paper object um, with something that's more durable, which provides more data on secondary sales, creates the potential, again, for artists to participate and galleries to participate in the markets they help create, which is, you know, certainly a thing. And then, you know, lastly, over time, it will create the potential for new forms of novel financialization, you know, related to, you know, artworks, because, you know, there's three trillion dollars in art situated in the United States alone, much of which is in storage, um, uh, you know, and, or on walls and, and not really generating any any financial, um, you know, component. And that could change, you know, if you have the repose of title for artworks in a digital object that can be acted upon by, you know, novel financial methods. Thank you, Chris. And just to conclude, uh, what are, you know, the projects you are working on currently that you'd like to talk about? Sure. So we launched an interesting app um, that was really um, designed to demonstrate the potential of the COA. And so we launched this at Expo Chicago, Tony Carmen's fair, um, 10th anniversary. We were the official app for the fair, and it incorporated the ability for galleries to one market works you know to a broader audience so that's good two it gave collectors the ability to you know buy the works right on the app to um add insurance uh, which is the first time that chubb has ever agreed to insure objects on the fly finance the and were purchasable on the app directly everything everything was purchasable and and the collector could add shipping finance and insurance, you know, all in the same flow. So that's a good efficiency measure. And then, you know, as, as many collectors can appreciate, oftentimes the information about their collection is stored in ways that are not particularly accessible or, or organized, right? So this gives you almost a, you know, ready-made collection management tool that ties in, you know, digital COA, access to services, connectivity with the gallery, you know, so I think that there's an opportunity to um, expand that footprint and, and, and that type of digital engagement in a way that that uh, benefits everyone. And do you think you can work with other fairs than Expo Chicago? Oh, 100 percent, because the whole idea of like a decentralized identity is that collector could go from Expo Chicago to freeze and then be recognized by the galleries in, you know, whatever whatever way is determined to be most most interesting and then those fairs and the related galleries could communicate with those collectors in a in a direct way with more information because you know the the f galleries obviously have a sense of you know well that was a good fair and there's all this anecdotal evidence but the fair itself doesn't really have a lot of data and sure. having more data and information and insights as to what your customers are doing I think is always a positive. Good. Good for you. Thank you, Chris. And thank I you, Pauline. For all your thank you. projects and developments. Have a nice day. You too. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. I just stopped.